and hopefully everybody that's in this inside this syntactical trust training will learn something uh, I do have an external recording device so I'm recording everything that's being done so that way I can share this with you upon our conclusion um, internally I think it's tethered where it'll run like 45 minutes to an hour and then it may actually it may drop and then you have to just log back into the same link so we can continue all the good stuff but we won't drop a beat with the recording because it'll externally record everything that's being done all right uh, in the fast lane of syntactical trust, a lot of moving parts that are definitely being implemented. And I want to utilize ChatGPT as a mechanism for, um, for synergy and hypothecation. What I want to do, though, is I want to actually cue you in, if you will, to a particular space. And this will be my actual personal chat space that you'll take a look at and use it for references. We can kind of see how all this stuff kind of go in when we really put this stuff in motion here so just bear with me while I bring up my uh, let's see my chat here that I should have desktop for let's see okay so I have this right here and so now All right, you should be seeing my chat GPT, and let me now go into the Zoom so I can get the capture card to do just that. So we're going to share. All right, you should be sharing my screen, and we want to share my chat GPT. All right, now can everybody in the class see my screen here? I can see it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. I can see it. Okay, beautiful. Now, uh, as you can see, in my chat GPT, it actually uh, looks maybe a little bit different than yours. What do you notice that may look different from your setup versus mine? You got four and three available, plus you got GPT plus. All right. Now. The unadulterated version is you want to have this thing prompt to your specs to get the maximum use. Now, because I'm, I'm technically legally blind, it takes me a while to, to, to read things, research in this capacity. The, the ability to be able to speak to ChatGPT gives me the ability to speak to you, just like I'm speaking to you. Um, so that helps me. The plugins are are an addition because they allow me to do different things. Like if you haven't seen what the plugins look like, I'll just kind of give you a quick little tutorial. These plugins, uh, let's see here, we're gonna go into the plugin store because I think they got a plugin store. Let's see if it should bring it up here. There we go. All right, and these are all the available plugins that I've enabled here. And, you know, we got things like Axe PDF, Plugin Finder, Diagrams Calculator, Total Query Search. Uh, you got Mixbox 1, I mean, Chat to Video, Video Highlight. Uh, a lot of different ones I've kind of played with. And some work, you know, in terms of what I'm trying to do a whole lot better than others. But these are all the available ones that are available in this uh, chat GPT plus proponent. Now the three that I got is Axe, GPT, Speakle, and I got to see what this one is. I think this one here does some kind of design. Let me just go through it because everyone that's in blue is the one I'm using. So I'm going to go through right quick. I can tell you what the ones I'm using. Okay, I'm using Axe, your, your PDF, Show Me Diagrams, there we go, and speak, speak, Speaky. Now, Speaky lets me take content and convert it directly into an audio that I can use for podcasting. So I can actually, do, you know, do my research on a topic or subject, and then use Speakle to create an actual podcast from that. Now, um, the the Design Me 
actually creates graphs and designs if I need that. And then, of course, Axe PDF is just like it sounds. I have the ability to convert the PDF into an ID URL, and that URD URL is uploaded directly into the chat. Now, what I'm going to do is show you some of the things I've done, and then we're going to go into implementation from that standpoint. Uh, let's kind of go to my previous, some of my, some of my previous searches up there. You can tell I got a lot of stuff going on on the left-hand side of the screen here. And, um, and this is all part of my data stream here. And I'm going to go to the drips and trust administration just for conversation purposes here. Let's see here. Now, what I'm demonstrating now is going back into a previous stream and extracting data from something that you've already researched and or um, perfected in that proponent. All right, so I'm in this particular proponent is populating my list. Here, I'm trying to see what it's going to do. All right, this is my... My layout here, let's see, I'm going to kind of, let's see if I can, uh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, there we go, okay, this was done in 3.5, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste this, because it gave me a pretty good outline. Just bear with me for a second. I'm going to start a new one, but I'm going to use this data, this outline. Now, what I want to actually do before I do it is I want to create a bankable instrument using this, using this outline. This outline deals with a dividends reinvestment plan using it in a, in a transaction, you know, from a, a real estate transaction. So... I'm going to tether up. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and prompt, you know, prep my, my plugins. Go into that. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my outline. And there's a reason why I do this. Putting this outline in, now I just got to put the prompts in front of it and make sure I give it, you know, assign certain roles. And I usually put a bracket in front of it there. Move my cursor back. I'll say something like you are a lawyer. Well, matter of fact, let me just try this. Bear with me. I don't know if it's going to work with this extra technology going on in the background, but I'm going to try it. Let's see here. You are a lawyer. Please convert this outline into a detailed step-by-step -step guide for implementation. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Now, not being able to do it, it heard what I said, but I, I needed. I, I, I think you uh, didn't put the, the outline. Right, I ruled it outline. So this, let me try to. I'm gonna try because when I said it, I didn't give it the instructions. That's what I was afraid of. So let me kind of do it the way I initially wanted to do it. Same thing, just I'm gonna manually put it in. But I'll be able to perfect it once I get it in here. So let's go back. Boom. Boom. You are a lawyer. Well, you know what? Since I got it right here, let me just copy and paste my question. I put in before. I always assume it's not the machine, it's the user. All right. Da, 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 da. Now I want to go to the end of and end that quotation. There we go. Press go. See what we get. It begins to 
populate. We'll just wait and let it do its magic. Go ahead. Do your thing, Mary Jane. Now remember, the end goal is to create an M3 asset using this ally. Now, after I can, it's still going here. Yeah, it's still going. And once I get to the end of this, I kind of look at this step by step, and I'm kind of, let's like go up to one so I can kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Let's go back to. All right understand the definitions of drips these are plans offered by corporations that allow investors to reinvest their capital dividends by purchasing additional shares or fractional shares on a dividends payment date let's say i was stuck in how to do this step this part of the step Bullet number one. Here's what I might say. You are a lawyer. Could you explain step one in more detail with more robust legal terms and also in addition add a diagram that explains how to implement a dividends reinvestment plan? This is going to probably give us some results, so let's just, well, and usually when I get this type of prompt here, that means I'm giving it a little bit too cumbersome instructions. All right, so, let's say I'll go here. Using step number one as my guide, can you draw me a diagram explaining how to implement step number one? And again, I'm getting that same prompt. Now, usually... Usually when I get that back to back, what I'll typically do is I'm going to copy this outline again right here. Is it is it the, the voice recognition I recognize in your instructions? Because that's what it looks like. It, I think it's, it's not I think it's not picking it up, but I'm finna uh, how I check it is I'll go into a whole new stream, implement my plugins and see if that's that's it. Because if it's just not hearing me, then I'll manually put it in. But it may be doing some other stuff. I'm going to try this again in this capacity. Yeah, usually it would type it out after you say it. Yeah, you, yeah usually, usually it would, but it depends upon just how it's absorbing the data. So I'm going to, let's go here. I'm going to start a new stream. So I'll post this.
try to go a different direction. Get the same result, just kind of go a different direction. Here. See what I'm gonna get now. Okay. It's gonna go to one of my plugins. It's called Show Me Diagrams. Let's see what it's gonna give me here. It's a diagram that represents what's there. Drawing a diagram. All right, so I need to regenerate this response, which I think is going to do it itself. Let's see, show me diagram, red star plug in. Let's regenerate the response just for clarity. There we go. Well, this is the diagram. Understand the definition of a zip. Learn about the purpose of the drips and trust administration. Recognize the importance of understanding drips for lawyers. Now, let's see if I can go into what I was trying to do earlier. All right, let's see here. Let's see. I want to use this diagram. All right. You are a lawyer. Using this diagram, can you draw out a step-by-step -step detailed guide on step one implementation? Yeah, and this is what I suspect. It's not hearing me because I got the share and all these other things, and so it's it's, it's not giving me the proper um, response. And it's probably because because we're sharing this in Zoom. That's what I figured. All right, no worries. We'll just manually put it in and get what we're looking for.
Now I'm gonna throw a twist in here. Misspelling this on purpose. Let's see what I get here. Here's the suggested outline. Motion here. What I find remarkable about these bullet points is when it's in this data stream. I'm going to show you once it's finished what you can do with the bullet points. Think about the bullet points as suggestions. So it's now when it asks you, it says discuss the benefits of the drip, such as compounding interest returns and cost savings. You can simply, in the aspect, okay, in 10 minutes, you're going to um, we've got to refresh your browser and come back in. Um, so we've got 10 minutes for that, no worries. All right, when I got these bullet points up, I'm going to make subtle suggestions like, um, let's see here, I'm going to pick one. And I want, hope you're paying attention to how we're getting here. It says, in course introduction, briefly explain course objectives and outcomes. Introduce the concept of drips and their relevancy to trust and trust administration. What I'm going to do is copy these two, and I'm going to put a simple instruction in front of it. Something like this. Copy this. Paste the bullets. Place it in brackets. Back it up. Now I'm going to say something like. You are a lawyer. Can you did you see how I did that you see how I prompted it I took the bullet point and simply added a a row and a question and then once you do that we should get a result I noticed you use page Mm-hmm. Yes. What usually happens when you prompt it, you go from... When you get your bullet points, you can use commands like, Can you teach me? execute this is where it gets real interesting this is where the definitions and and the and and the layout gets that much more defined are you guys following how, how this is coming out yes sir it makes sense all right so so if you had included uh-huh i'm not familiar with the drip but mm -hmm. um Let's say if you had, uh, let's see, some additional information that correlates with this. Right. A, a drip, like uh, some sort of documentation or. Right. Um, 
like if or I took a contract or a contract or right you can you can come you can actually ha- if you use the settlement statement right like if I had a settlement statement if I had a prospectus if I had another data set I can combine and reference all that in one outline I can have it recreate additional verbiage from that you get your, your possibilities are limitless what you can do when you have the data sets like I'm going to prompt this to take this outline and incorporate it into a court registry investment system disbursement with a K1 using this outline I'm gonna have it go through all of the data sets that I've done up until this point to put together the preferred document. So let's say what I'm seeking is an M3 conveyance that don't exist. But I'm going to create a proponent that is, that is fully executable under certain rules and provisions. So if I know the rules and provisions, like if I'm going to disperse an M3 asset, I got to know what Federal Reserve regulation I have to use. That regulation will be Regulation J. So, so could you ask it same question but saying using regulation J of the such and such right as a lawyer could you explain to me blah 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 right like like out here I'm gonna try to do this I'm gonna try to do it with the audio but I think the audio is tripping because it's picking up I know the mic is picking up other stuff that's why it's not hearing here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say you are a lawyer put my 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 semicolon here using regulation J in conjunction I'm misspelling that on purpose. You are a lawyer using regulation. You you are a lawyer using regulation J in conjunction with this outline. Can you create a step by Step implementation guide that will explain in great detail the benefits of a dividends be a drip dividend reinvestment plan being used to disperse this Spelling this wrong. Disperse proceeds proceeds held held in trust.
You're a lawyer using Regulation J in conjunction with this outline. Can you create a step-by-step -step implementation guide? Yeah, I got that spelled wrong. I know that. Implementation da, 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 da. guide that will. will explain in great detail the benefits of a dividends reinvestment plan being used as a vehicle. There we go. Let's spell it again. Vehicle for disbursement. For disbursement of proceeds held in trust. Now, I was on in my demonstration. I'm trying to show you, even with misspellings, this is a language model. So let's see what ChatGPT can gather from this. up the language all right guys y'all come on in we're moving on down the line All right, let's see if I can put All right, just bear with me. I'm trying to bring everybody back in. Mm -hmm. All right, got them coming on back in. There you go, there you go. All right, yeah, it's going to kick us out every 45 minutes. You just have to just re-log in, but I keep sending the link so you can get back in. You should be able to see my screen in a minute. I'm going to come back and share the screen. Sharing the screen. Should be coming up. There we go. Alright, we got this. OBS, da da da. Here we go. Uh, OBS is what I'm looking for. Diagram.
back and let's go back and see if I can bring it back up and here share my screen there let's see what we got here there we go Miss Bonnie you can see my screen now yes sir it's up all right in the meantime, these are what I put in. So you are a lawyer using Regulation J in conjunction with this outline. Can you create a step-by-step -step implementation guide that will explain in great detail the benefits of a drip being used as a vehicle for disbursement of proceeds held in trust? It says, sure, I can help create your step-by-step -step implementation. A dividends reinvestment plan as a vehicle for disbursement of proceeds held in trust in accordance with Regulation J. Here's the suggested outline. So here we go. Now the revised outline in a step-by-step -step format. And when we have that, now we just simply go through the prompts to ask it to execute from that standpoint. So let me see. I think I got some more folks that's trying to get in. Let's see where they're at. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to stop the share. Just for, Let me just stop the share and see who else is trying to get in here. Stop the share. Okay. Okay, we got coming back in. All right, everybody's getting there. All right. And it already populated the step by step. Next part of this is what I'm going to be showing you is once you get the outline like you want, you go into prompting it to execute, to create to explain, to teach, draft me, assign roles, and then this is where you can really get creative with implementation. I want to walk away with a finished product. So much <laughs> you want to you want to go through and see this helps your learning curve because see if if you, if <laughs> if you do this this way not only will it teach you but it's like once you do it one time it makes the next one that you do easier because you have a formula you have a format and remember it's remembering the previous data stream coming into the next you know outlooks so this is why i'm all on everybody about cases i need cases i have technology that needs cases to learn from you're looking for scenarios to fund you want to literally like we can take something that's hypothetical and make it verbatim. We can take it from just a concept in our head into something that uh, can be tangibly touched. And and let me let me say it like, you know, if if I were talking to my five year old me, mm -hmm. right? Right. Once you do it once, then it's just a matter of applying the mem the client to it. Correct. Once you find the case study that you can apply to it. Correct. Then you create it one time, and then all you're really doing is looking for the case studies, and you should have the packages with it. Exactly. But that was just my thought. Process. Right, and and that's and that's a good way of looking at it. Like literally, if you have certain cases that you want to be as your parameters then you orchestrate a transaction around that let the case study be your reference so you ask you you prompt it to give you mock arbitration cases that are similar to the one that's in question you know and so right so it, it, it's it's a real good tool in this particular space now i'm going to show you my results so i'm, so I'm going to try to bring this back up so everybody can see my shared screen and Go back into the results here. Let's That's see. So we go back into the diagram of the drip. And see, this is what it gave us. In the end result, what we have now is a detailed implementation plan incorporating Regulation J and the drip. Now, we go through... Now, again, I'm going to go back to define Regulation J and its relevancy to trust administration, explain the concept of DRIP and how they can be used as a vehicle for dispersing proceeds held in trust. And all I'm going to do is copy my, my bullet points just like that. I'm going to go into the messenger. 
I'm going to drop it in just in that capacity, and then I'm going to sign those rows. I go here. I sign. Now I'm going to get a little different. You are a civil law notary. Civil law notary. Note admitted. That's right. Can you... And I put my colons, oh, colon right there. I end it with a bracket there. And if I did this right, I should get a result. And we type it in there. We toggle down the bottom of the screen. And it looks like we got some magic happening down here. And we just wait for it to do its thing. Regulation J is a set of rules establishing, established by the Federal Reserve Board in the United States. It governs the collection of checks and other items by the Federal Reserve Bank and funds transfers through Fedwire, a real-time gross settlement system of central bank money used by the Federal Reserve Banks to transfer funds electronically between member institutions. In context of trust administration, Regulation J may come into play in the management and transfer of assets within the trust, particularly if the trust involves significant transactions through the Federal Reserve Bank and or the Fedwire system. Compliance with Regulation J ensures that these transactions are conducted in accordance with federal law, which can help protect the interest of the trust and its beneficiaries. I think in this opinion, this is enough of a runway to kind of really get some interesting synergy going. Now remember, this was the first two bullet points. So what I do is I wash, rinse, and repeat each bullet point, each step, until I have a revised formula for implementation. Then it's just a matter of, can you draft me a bill of exchange using steps such and such? Can you draft me a bill of exchange incorporating all seven steps? It's all in how, you, so you have to know what the inroad is. What do you need to complete the transaction? You need an M3 asset that meets specific rules and regulations. Does anybody have any questions over where we are, do you have a question specific to where we at in this, this layout here? So when you gave the steps earlier, mm -hmm. or the, um, what documents were needed, right. I think once, once you put this piece together and actually get the bill of exchange right. completed, then you can ask it to create the transmittal letter. Exactly. Like if you start your day, if you already know I got to have a transmittal letter, UCC, like I get an example. Let's say now I'm going to throw this into the mix. Using, you are a lawyer. I mean, so I'm going to try to see if I can talk it through. I'd rather talk it through. You are a lawyer. Using this outline, can you draft verbiage for a UCC-1, a UCC-3, and UCC-5 that allows this type of implementation? Hmm, it heard me that time. Now I'm ab I'm absolutely tickled pink. <laughs> that was all I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the final step. Yeah. <laughs> now, it, now because the verbiage is going back and forth between because we're talking, it's it's this. But you'll see where I'm going with this. It's okay. Don't worry, because I can just simply just manually type it in. You are a lawyer. You can you can repeat it. It 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 it'll it, print it it'll print it out. But I would just try to I'm gonna see if I can regenerate and then paste it. 
Yeah, I'm gonna try so I can copy it and paste it where I made the. You can see it. It captured. Let me try to see if I can regenerate my response because it gave. I saw it, but then I didn't see it. Let's see if it's gonna give it to me. No, I'm gonna have to do it this way. Here we go. No worries. No worries. You are a lawyer. Semicolon. Using this outline as a guide. Can you draft? me verbiage four and I know what my verbiage needs to be for it needs to be for a u c c one u c c two I meant three. And UCC five. That that will perfect the security interest. in accordance with Reg U Lay Shin J using a K one. I'm changing the algorithm a little bit. Just to demonstrate the capabilities. Because I wanted to go back to all of my previous data sets to accomplish this. To demonstrate its ability. We'll see what kind of response I get. Okay. All right, it's generating a UCC financing statement. kind of fine tune this but before I can fine tune this let's see exactly where we landed at with this all right it says as an AI developed by OpenAI I can provide a general guide on how to draft a UCC1 or UCC3 and 5 to perfect security interest and compliance with regulation J using the K1 for disbursement however it's important to consult a legal professional to ensure the accuracy and compliance with all relevant laws and regulations here's a general guide so it gives me a general guide. You're going to put the name and address. 
Name and address secure party, description of the collateral. The UCC should be filed with the appropriate state office. Secretary of State, officer that is located. UCC 3 is used to make changes to the UCC 1, such as to continue to assign, to terminate the statement. Now, let's stop right there. If I got the UCC 1 perfected in the aspect of the question with the verbiage, in order to perfect the security interest in conjunction with Regulation J using a K-1 as disbursement, then what should I be doing on the UCC-3? Should I be changing it? Should I be assigning it? Should I be terminating it? Or should I be continuing it? If I have perfected the UCC-1 and it's right, should I be using the three to a ch to change the one, or should I be using the UCC three to continue the one? To continue it. Beautiful. Yeah, now, that, isn't the UCC uh, just an amendment? It can be used to continue, change, assign, or terminate. Now watch this. The UCC3 amendment is to make changes such as to continue. Why would you think it could continue if the UCC is correct? Remember, your job in, in being a compliance officer is to make all parties whole. So if it's a legitimate debt that's substantiated by UCC, you're continuing it. But you may be adding additional what? Secured parties and additional uh, debtors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there's no new debtors and there's no new creditors, then you continue as is. Continuing is a form of renewing. See, a UCC needs to be renewed every seven years. That's where you get the continue. See, until you start doing these UCCs, the, the, your, your perception of the UCC is fixed on maybe something I've said or may have harped on you to do, but you're not looking at the extensive use of it. When you give, it, when you give chat GPT specific instructions, it's going to highlight or accentuate relevant points. Now, when we go to the UCC-5, because I hear this a lot, i never seen a UCC-5, Mr. Bay. Well, a UCC-5 is what? It's an information statement used to indicate the previously filed record was inaccurate or wrongly filed. You know how hard it is to, to show someone what I'm about to show you when they're stuck in their own thinking? The, settlement, the security settlement system is set up where the government monetized the trust that just so happens to be the same name as the, your, your mom and dad gave you. That's not by coincidence. That's by conjecture. That's why they're operating in this, this implied trust that they've created. So they're the settler of that trust. So that means what they're doing, they're perfectly right in that capacity. The thing that's wrong is that you are associating that name as if it was you. You'll do a UCC-5 just to show who's who. Remember, you can't prove anything. So a lot of individuals get stuck like deers in head like with a UCC-5 because they don't think the system that is as is is wrong. It's not. Because it's not wrong. You're wrong in your thinking. You're emotionally correct, commercially wrong. The commercially wrong is what you're clearing up for everybody in the public so there is no misconstruing your intention. What might you correct on a UCC-5 that changes you from a debtor to a creditor? I just gave you the answer. What might you do with a UCC five that takes you from being a creditor, I meant to a from a debtor to a creditor, because it's not what you say, it's what you do that determines who you are. So what might you do 
on a five to change you from being a debtor to a creditor? Simply mm-hmm. advise of simply separate the debtor from the creditor. Right. Or remember, creditors are going to conduct preliminary examination. They're going to have certain documentation. On the UCC-5, you can simply articulate that here's the last 90-day CTRs that demonstrates your what? Compliance. Your creditor. Your creditor. Okay. There you go. Once you do that, now you, as the competent fiduciary, can issue, like a promissory note, a letter of credit. That's why when you put information on a UCC-5, all these individuals that's in the private placement can monetize. But they don't know how to draft the UCC-5. Haven't we just covered how to draft one? Yes, we did. All right. If I'm going too fast, guys, speak. Speak now. Are you understanding what we're saying? I just literally woke up from about a two-month nap. (laughs) Yeah, it makes total sense to me. Once you get that UCC-5 implemented, now... Regulation, Jay, you got to know what Federal Reserve regulation allows you to do what you're doing. And this is Regulation J that governs the collection of checks and other items. The other items are bills of exchanges, other general intangible M3 assets. And again, Regulation J governs the collection of checks and other items by the Federal Reserve Bank and funds through the Fed wire. How are you going to get this into the Fed wire? Through the UCC filing, because they're going to give you, what, a UCC control number. That's the indication that you're making an entry into the court registry investment system. That's your security interest. When you put it on a 1, 3, and 5, you just made a deposit into the CRIS. Now Regulation J is the governing you know, agency that's going to allow a recipient to pull it out. So is that... That done automatically is, is automatically put in the Chris when you do a one, three, and five. All judges are sitting on the bench pretending to be bankers, and when you say you shot this or you didn't do this or how do you plead, all of that data, just like what I'm doing right here, they're making an onboard entry into the Chris. That case, that's why they got to send it to the clerk. The clerk is the bank. That's where the final entry is made with the clerk of court. He sits there and listens to you who shot John and enters into his laptop all this noting and minuting. And he sent it to the clerk. That's the onboarding. Now, you don't have to do that because you're a competent fiduciary and you only need two notaries to do arbitration. So you can make entries arbitrarily through a notary because what's in a notary's journal is the equivalent of the court registry. That's why you're called a commercial registry. So what you have in your journal can be handed over to the clerk of court for implementation, for for onboarding. And you onboard through what? What forms? The financing statements. Right. Now, the K-1 should make even more sense to you because the K-1 is the form is used to report the beneficiary shares in the trust income deductions and credits ETC. If the trust is using a drip for disbursement, the K-1 should reflect the income from the dividends that is being reinvested. Doesn't this make a whole lot more sense now? Wow. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I'm showing you preliminary prompts, but when you get on your homework, you can create very advanced algorithms that does tokenization. Like, like I'm going I'm to I'm 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 step it up a notch. You're ready to fund this thing. So... You are a what? 
Who you think we need to sign now since we're ready to make this thing do what it do? Give me a role. If you're ready to fund, and who, how you, how you want to, what role you want to assign to to your AI? If you're ready, ooh, get, let's get let's, don't, don't be scared to say it. Starts with a B. You're doing what? Banking, right? So you you want to produce? You want to be a what? A banker. I'm a banker. You are a banker. Let's go here. You are a Federal Reserve. See, you see where I'm going with this? I'm simply demonstrating if you know who's on second. Do not be, because you need to see it from that side of the fence to understand what needs to be done. So give me a role. Who do you want to be? Who do you want the AI to be? Somebody designate a role. Banker. We'll say banker. Everybody likes banker. Okay, we'll say banker. All right. You are a banker. Intermediary. Woo! Okay. You are a... I spelled it wrong. You are an intermediary. Create. Since you're a banker, you need a negotiable instrument, right? There you go. A bill of exchange that That incorporates all of those steps. Let's see. Maybe I can. I'm going to let it freestyle for a minute just to see if I like the what, what it's thinking about. Let's see. If I did it right, we should get a response. It's getting ready to run out of time in 10 minutes, so in 10 minutes, you guys can have to log back in. <laughs> and there's your bill of exchange. <laughs> With the verbiage. You guys see that? Yes, sir. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Because the Bill of Exchange is giving them exactly how to process this thing. It said the instruction, the Bill of Exchange is drawn under the dividends reinvestment plan established by the drawer with drawee. Drawee is instructed to pay the amount specified to the payee on demand and or at the predetermined date. This payment represents the reinvestments of dividends in accordance with the drip. The drawer has filed a UCC-1 financing statement, a UCC-3, and UCC-5 information statement to perfect the security interest in compliance with Regulation J. The drawer will provide payee with a K-1 form reflecting the income from the dividends that is being reinvested. Then there's the endorsements, signature drawer, all that jazz. 
And there you have it. And as normal, you will be sharing these drafts, right? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. That's why I want you to have your chat GPT available in this exercise. Um, and then, you know, we come back in because it's going to time you guys out in a minute. We're going to come back in and then we're going to go into very specifics because it's easy to share when you already have, you're already in the space. That's why I'm using Bitrix and see if you have unlocked certain plugins, there's something you can do on your browser that'll pick it up also. But, you know, it's just a matter, you know, baby steps. Um, I enjoy the fact that when I'm not recording this way, if it's just me and I'm recording a tutorial, I can sit here, talk to the chat GPT, record a tutorial, and totally write an entire platform from it. So it has unlimited potential. But it's only as good as the user. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. I'm going to stop it. And stopping the share should let me go in here and actually, yeah, because it's got a few more minutes. Okay, we're going to stop the share. Why the share has been stopped? Out of the example that I just used, what else would you see? What else would you would need to implement this type of transaction? What'd you say? What was the question? Out of everything we've shown up until this point, is there anything in addition to what I've shown you that you will need to implement this type of transaction? We still need to, uh, was that, is that considering that the UCC1 and everything is filed, the UCC5 and everything is filed? Right, you have to file it. You file the one and you got a control number. Then you use that control number on the UCC3. And then that control number is used on the UCC5. And then now you just need a physical instrument because, remember, these are roles that I'm assigning. But you just did the bill of exchange, right? Right, because as a banker. That's one of your roles. Isn't that the instrument? Uh, yeah. So, uh, is there still a transmittal letter involved? There you go. Okay. So, and, uh, I, so I, why, we're going to go step by step. Using this bill of exchange. Yeah, let's call myself a lawyer. You see how I keep assigning the roles? You was a banker when you created the instrument. We lost your screen. Right. I, 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 I stopped this year. As, as a lawyer, you're now wanting to draft. You want to use the bill of exchange as a reference to draft a transmittal letter as a reference as a reference the thing may time you out but don't panic I'm gonna send you a link so you can get back in reference as a reference not at all you didn't really use this bill of exchange as a reference can Can you draft me a trans middle letter 
as a lawyer using this bill of exchange as a reference, can you draft me a transmittal letter? If I did this right, I should get a response from this data set. And it's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling. And it's saying, hmm, sure. Here's a general example of a transmittal letter that referenced the bill of exchange. And it literally just dropped. <laughs> wow, this thing is awesome, man. There's your transmittal letter. Then it gives you the enclosed bill of exchange with it. You want to show us that word? I'll finish. I'm, give me a minute. I'm, I'm going to show you that. <laughs> I'm going to show that to you. I don't want you guys to get timed out. So let me just see if I can. How much? How many more minutes we got before you guys get timed out here? I'm trying to see. You got two minutes. Okay. So let's, let me just. I, I got to I gotta run my boys to uh, to class tonight. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I'm to drop off here in the next probably okay. five minutes. No worries, no worries. Well, I may be able to get back on via my phone though. Right, and what I'm gonna do is the recording. I have this whole thing recorded in its entirety, in in the in a space I'm gonna put up on the new Bitrix space. So no worries. Whatever you've missed in the gaps, you'll have you'll have the complete video. But if you can see my screen now, this is the transmittal letter. I can take this, this data set and, and draft a trust indemniture. I can take this data set and draft any other instrument that I need. So you just have to have you know, a wish list, a to-do list, a punch-out list. And if you don't have one, this, the great thing about chat is you feed it enough data, it'll create you an outline. And you just follow your outline. You say you take, you take that and put it in the trust indenture? Sure. Is that what you just said? Mm-hmm. That's exactly what you said. Right. You can take that and create your trust indenture. You can do a lot of things. If you need a Schedule A for the trust, let's say you have the trust set in a certain motion, but you want to have a special... Scheduled A that does a certain type of noting and minuting. You can create that for me. Wait. So, for example, mm -hmm. our trust meeting right. with our board of trustees, right. we can record and then throw in the chat and it's just have, have give it have it do an outline. Right. You 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 capture the audio. <laughs> Drop it in the chat, have it converted into a noting and minuting journal. You can have an accounting ledger associated with it. It's, you have an accounting ledger associated with it. Right, right. So, it's, so the possibilities are limitless. The thing about this tool is everything that you thought was once tedious is how on earth am I going to do it? It's like I'm ready to do it.
Hopefully you guys can hear me. Somebody let me know that I'm coming in loud and clear. I can hear you, brother. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. All right. We're waiting on everybody else to get back in. But as you can tell, this tool has a lot of, um, it has a universal um, use. I can see that. I missed the, the, the second half of it. I got in on the last five minutes gotcha gotcha uh, gotcha i didn't get the notification from for the second link gotcha no worries it's being recorded so you'll get the whole thing so whatever you miss i got you big bro i got you yeah but you know just basically what this is and what it's always has been mm -hmm. is because of the the asymmetric information that we have right and how it's associated with all of the different entities that we're using right we're able to we're able to reference that in whatever it is that we are offering. Correct. And that's that's really what it boils down to, because that's what I'm seeing. Because you know, before it's like, you know, of course it's still like, how do you do this and how do you do that? But at the same time, how we do it is utilizing these different references. Right. And and don't be because a as long as you reference that, just like the bill of exchange, right? What you're doing now, right? Okay, as long as we we have the ability, just like we used to, mm -hmm. to draw on ourselves. So I mean, right? We, we bring the credit, so we just conveying this information. It's an inform right? It's a, it's it's an instruction document. You're creating an instruction doc. That's that's. And this is what you look out for. You're going to run into this space. A lot of folks that's going to commingle because they're not using accounting. So they're going to have a very intelligent algorithm that falls apart because they commingle in the fundamentals. And if you're not careful, you're going to be the tar baby that's going to be stuck to. You're going to be battling with these folks in the jumpsuit type scenarios trying to say what had happened was. The greatest, easy to come in. right? The, the greatest thing you got to remember is that when you have your own system, how do outsiders access your information through your website, through your system, just like you access their information? Do not alter that algorithm. This is why we heard us in the earlier conversation. You heard when Lamont was breaking down the, the the limited possibilities of being able to create the web server. That's the whole point. You know, everybody's not ready for that type of conversation unless they have a background in it. But when you see it, you can't unsee it. So it's like all I need is my own database, and I need to get you access to it. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's it. And Bitrix becomes that interface. You can create an onboarding system. Like inside of Bitrix, it has website copying capabilities that i was telling you guys about that's been in the bank right. and in the box it has that you just have to prompt it there's a link that's called vox script vox script scrubs the internet for information so if i want to create a login page just like the dtcc guess what it takes five seconds if swim if you want to create a login like the right you mean to come to come into our, to your right. to your system is what you mean like i i'm going to show you i'm going to show you vox script scrubbing the jenny may for very specific information i think i did this in a previous one I but think it is is i well i don't know i i, I the last time let me see what class was that um I think we were going over the mortgage backed security. Right. And and that, exactly. Right. I'm you can put a link in. Right. So it has the ability if you know the URL, 
it will pull data from that website. If I want to copy that content, first I tell it to scrub the internet for content. And then once it has the content, I say create me a website from the content. There you go. Because it's been disseminated mm -hmm. from one All right. to the next. All right. And then you can reauthor that right. you know, to your to your algorithm or what you're trying to do. Right. So remember, people are used to logging in with passwords and so I mean, you can create your own commercial registry and literally tokenize. Like, I'm going to use this, this transmittal letter and I'm going to ask it to create me a tokenization platform. Using this bill of exchange. As a reference. Now I'm, I'm going to go. Now I'm assigning the roles. As a lawyer. No, as a banker. Here we go. As a banker. As a banker, can you create a smart contract tokenization God tokenization God Pontification. Purposes. See, I left this thing wide open now. I'm going to see what it gives me. Using this bill of exchange. See what we get here. If I did this right, I should get a response. Sure, here's a general guide on how to create a smart contract for tokenization of a bill of exchange for apothecation purposes. Now, now, this is a basic, this is a basic blockchain <laughs> set of instructions. Let's look at step one. Can you read it? Can you see it? Who can see step one? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Well, can you read it? First, define the token that will represent the bill of exchange in the digital world. This token should carry all the necessary information from a bill of exchange, such as the amount, the draw, the drawee, and the payee, <laughs> which is all three things. That's exactly. Really exactly. Exactly. Then it tells you to create the smart contract. 
It's a blockchain platform that supports smart contracts such as Ethereum. The smart contract should include the logic for creating the issuing tokens, the logic for transferring tokens from one party to another, the logic for enforcing the terms of the bill of exchange such as the payment or amount specific date. Look at step three. Come on down. See it? Step three, yeah. Read Use it. Smart contract. Mm -hmm. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and read it. Use a smart contract to create tokens representing the bill of exchange. Each token should represent a fraction <laughs> of the t <laughs> of the total amount of the bill of exchange. Bill of exchange allowing for partial hypothecation if desired. The fraction, the breakdown. Mm, fractional banking. So what's step four? The token can be used for hypothecation purposes. The owner of the token, the draw or third party, if the draw has transferred the token, can pledge them as collateral <laughs> for a loan. What the? Remember, right. <laughs> Remember, it's tied to the algorithm now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Read step five. If the borrower defaults on the loan, the lender can use the smart contract to enforce the terms of the hypothecation agreement. This could include automatically transferring the tokens from the borrower to the lender. Yeah. Yeah, step six, watch this. Ensuring that the tokenization and hypothecation process complies with all relevant laws and regulations, including those related to securities, lending, and blockchain technology. Remember, this guide is a general overview and may not cover all specifics of your situation. Always consult with legal professionals and a blockchain expert in dealing with complex procedures like tokenization and hypothecation. Now, in this short guide, you just got a whole bunch of valuable information on how you move value, right? <laughs> just in the breakdown. <laughs> you... Mm -hmm. This is the part that's most exciting because when you apply this asymmetric information, the eight-year-old, it thinks that's what it's supposed to do all the time. So in its explanation, it's going to do it all the time until you change the algorithm. Exactly. And this, too, also is where um, you were talking about GPT for all comes into play. Because right. This is in your own. It's in your uh, space. There you go. It's about, right. your, it's about your data. Now, you probably ain't hearing a whole lot of people talking about tokenizing, <laughs> tokenization of bills of exchanges. No. Right. They ain't hear nobody talking. They ain't talking about bill of exchange. Because, <laughs> number one, that's international. Exactly. <laughs> so they're not talking about that. They're mm -hmm. talking. About, they want mm -hmm. that bread. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's there's. I mean, it's, this is this is M three conveyance at its finest. The okay. ability to pledge the tokens as collateral. There are intermediaries that will give you an absorbent amount of credit based on tokens that you have or will have. Because if it can be made liquid right. in 20 to 18 months, it right. can be used to they, Exactly. That's the whole purpose behind peer-to-peer. -peer. They're using M3 assets, and they just tokenized it and monetized it. That's why it was peer to peer. So value on your ledger can easily be moved to my ledger through tokenization and smart contracts. Exactly. The smart contract is it, what transfers. It's like an accounting ledger. That's all it is. Right. Right. 
And when you tokenize it, credits become debits instantly. Debits become credits instantly. So value just moves from one row of numbers to another row of numbers. Those are the accounts. It doesn't go anywhere. It just goes from my screen to your screen, to his screen, to their screen, and vice versa. It keeps going. The value is just moving from screen to screen. You just have to br you have to bring it in and like utilize mm -hmm. the different steps. Mm -hmm. Once you once mm -hmm. you follow this step, now what do you, you know? What's the next step? Right. And when you use that information to convey it over to your next step. Right. I hope this making most sense to everybody. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely making sense. You know, it's it's just a, it, again, it's a it's a name game. Mm -hmm. And you know, so it's so like right now, I know that there's there's a transmitter letter. There's the, the samples right in between. Mm -hmm. But just now, I'm looking. It's like okay. I, I caught the tail end of it, but what I had gathered from the first, from the first session, mm -hmm. you create the, the layout, right? Which would be, like, you know, from an arbitration case or from, you know whatever right. value it is that we are using at that time, right? And then when you, you know, because of the convention mm -hmm. that we are using, you know, because that's how I come from, right? It, you know, that's what gives us the ability. So now. Once we get that, once we cover all of those bases, now, of course, you know, we need a transmittal letter. So now mm -hmm. we're going to take that information mm -hmm. because we, you need a transmittal letter in order to convey anything because that's, that's the cover sheet. That's how it's, that's how it's received. Correct. So this right so here. Now, mm -hmm. Yeah. So now the next move would be, I mean, that's where it was, went out on the last go round. The, the money transmittal bond. Now you draw the reference that um, Jacob wants that because right. of what he's able to do. Because it really never matters that when 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 they do what they do, mm -hmm. everything is insured, so they don't care whether you pay or not. Right. Because they're paid. It's just that they need you to pay. So then that way, that part of it keeps going. Right. They need. They need paying customers to keep the algorithm going because they have the ability to lend institutions have a right to borrow and then if you understand that you're moving value from one screen to another it's a, your ability to do that in 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 a multitude of different directions um with this particular class i'm gonna make this available in the audio and video of the new vitrix space so you can constantly refer back to this. Um, I have very specific courses that I'm going to make a link and an itinerary of, and I'll spend the rest of the evening doing that. So if you want some more fine-tuning in M3 conveyances and so forth, and, you know, these courses run no more than like five, ten dollars for a course, but they're going to, when I tell you it's going to change your whole algorithm, it's going to change your whole <laughs> algorithm because um, of the, of the information that's there. Now, because this is an AI tech, if there's something specific that you want to use in that space, uh, it can be made available. I just have to check the indexes. For example, remember Legal Jacks is like where a notary would post his or her security interest. I know we haven't talked about that in you guys' space, but let me just bring you up to speed. LegalJacks.com is like your public notice bulletin board. Anybody who wants to buy securities, you need to go to LegalJacks.com, become a subscriber, then they can see the type of securities that are being presented. I didn't know that was back up because I had tried to get to that. I don't know some of the time. Yeah, back. it's in it's in the bitch. It, yeah, it's it's in the Bitrix space. I'm trying to legal jacks for Bitrix. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, there's a legal space for Bitrix. There's a legal there's there's a Bitrix space for Page. You know, and see, Page oh, is yeah. for compliance officers and notaries, and then LegalJacks.com is a is in a is in that. You know, it has a whole different you know layout. But nonetheless, those spaces you want to use to start pointing individuals to. 
I'm going to peel it back one more time, a different page to that. Once you have created the instrument and placed it inside of your Bittrex space in your drive, you tap technically park an asset in the vault. Now you just simply need to invite a user to use the value that's in your vault. I don't know no other way to say it any simpler than that. No, you, have, that. you have an ability, if individuals are looking for funds, you have an ability to get them asymmetric information that will provide that mechanism. But when they go through that vault, there's a price of admission. There's certain things they have to do so because you can't, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You follow me? There's a whole bunch of non-disclosures that are involved in the background. And there's an algorithm that you're creating. And with subtle tweaks in your chat GPT, you can seg that information. Like you can give them a special link that you plug in the chat GPT. Like um, I'm going to try to demonstrate this in real time. So I'm going to start a new chat. I want to pull information off of a prospectus that I want to monetize. So I need a QCIP number. And since I have it in the document, I'm going to say, so there's this thing called, I got, a, I got this tab here that's called Ask PDF. So I'm going to stop the share because I got to go into my other browser to really work chat work it the way I want but I, I'm gonna show you the results so just bear with me I'm gonna open up another browser All right. I'm on Firefox so I'm gonna use a different I use Google Chrome and this is being recorded even though you can't see it the screens are being recorded so you'll be able to see this all right, I'm waiting for it to load up. All right, my Chrome is loading. All right, I'm loading my page. It's loading up. So now that I have this loaded up, I'm going to now go into ask PDF ask ask your PDF all right and this particular interface lets me directly take my document so I got a I on my computer I have a, a Jenny May perspective that has data in about 41 pages so what I'm going to do is actually find me a PDF we'll pick this one right here I'm going to load it up inside of that. Inside of this. All right, and then it's going to give me a document ID. And this document ID is how ChatGPT is able to, to read your documents. You got to give it, it's got a URL attached to the ID. So, I'm going to open up my, now I'm going to open up my share again so you can see this. So now we're back in my, you should be able to see my screen now. I'm going to say, can you from this PDF. All right. So I'm going to copy.
copy and paste the ID. That's the document ID. And this particular plugin called Ask Your PDF should kick in and scrub the PDF if I did it right. Okay. So it's prompting Ash your PDF. Here's 10 QCIPs. Can you see my screen? Yes, I see it. All right. Now I'm going to say, give me details on number one. Oh, I wasn't specific, so it shouldn't give me a prompt. It should say I need more data. I don't think I gave it enough data. But even though I didn't give it data, look what we're getting. This is giving me every security principal amount that's associated with that QC. See how it's populating? Yeah, I see that. I'm looking. Now, what I'm going to do is, let's say I'm halfway through and I may want to give some different instructions. I'm going to stop it generating right in the middle because I want to show you this. I want to redefine my search to say, give me details on number one. Or, Something specific. Give me the principal amount of number one. And I'm going to say give me Go back. Give me the principal amount of number one. If I did this right, I should get a result. Because it's saying it can't give me that. Let's go back. Notice how I'm finna say this. I'm gonna copy the QCIP. You see what I'm doing? Can you give me oh, and here's what I copy and paste. see what kind of information I get here.
Oh, running out of time. Can you see my screen? Do you see that number? Right. <laughs> Hundreds, thousands, millions. Right. Yeah. Right. So the key to this is having the data, but it can extrapolate this. So this adds a whole nother dimension to your data set. Hopefully this thing has, has inspired you to get cracking on this. Uh, before we jump off, does anybody have any questions? Uh, the transmitter bar. How do we convey that information? Basically, transmitter... Yeah, the, basically you... It, right, a transmitter bar, transmitter bar and portion for conveyance to go cap. You would, lace, you would basically have chat outline you a money transmittal bond with verbiage and give it a reference point. And then once it creates it, you petition that with your documents. Okay. PJ. That's how that would work. Right. You, right. You, you, after, after that's done, then it's in a position to be uh, transferred to Jacob along with all the other information. Right. It'll be conveyed over to Jacob. Right. You'll have, the you'll have the application. You would have, um, basically, you want, if you notice what you want to do going in, let's say, for instance, they don't get approved. So what I would do is I would take my, my independent 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 contractor agreement with go capital i would draft up a uh first off i would create a contract between myself and the client letting them know what points are going to be charged to get them across the finish line and inside that contract i will include a copy of my independent con independent contract with go capital highlighting the indemnity clause and my ability to use arbitration to get him in compliance that's why we're charging the points and then inside of that i would include as for the loan package for the for jacob would go capital a transmittal letter a ucc one a three and a five with the letter of credit and then also the verbiage for the um the um money transmittal bond which would be the verbiage and outline that you put together you know in, in that capacity so that and that would be the package and all of those will be tied in with the um, the the numbers that we're using is is green and red. Right. Right. Correct. 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 Those trust accounts and or bond numbers can be utilized in that regard. Now, depending upon what type of money transmitter bond you want to use, there's different types. So I'm imploring you, I'm encouraging you, I'm telling you to do some deep diving into money transmitter bonds and the different types, so you can get familiar with the different types. Okay. Yeah, but right. I want to know more about. I want to know more about all of it, but right. the, you know the intricate pieces. Right. Because those are the main. Those right. are the main things. Right. Now, um, is the same is the same conveyance with uh, North Ave as well? Yeah, North North Ave Capital. You want to really get in, go ahead and become a, a broker if you haven't with them and then get into their algorithm because they're on the USDA side of things and there's larger contracts, less restrictions. And then you want to combine the services. You want to create you an outline of services with Gold Capital and North Ave Capital then you really perfect all the things that you have between both entities to lay out a very strong platform because you have a platform right there. 
when you line all the services up and create a step-by-step -step implementation guide. Like a client should be going through, if, if, if the company, if Go Capital has 12 products, you should be able to have one client utilize all 12 products, not just one product, but one client, 12 products, if you do this right. Right. Yeah. That's how you get the better bang for the buck. You bring the client in on the, you know, so it doesn't matter which one they want. You want to tie them into everything else they got. Now that you mentioned that, because uh, I think that came up uh, one time before, because that, that also falls in line with with our own structure with doing a transaction every 30 days. Right, 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 right. That's the whole point. So you should, so when you have a client, they should not just be a client for commercial real estate. They should be a client for every product and or service that's being offered. And how, how, how what, what is the time lapse on each one of those products? If you put the resource, you, the time lapse, it just depends on which order you do and your, your level of competency. Don't think that you got to do one to get to another product. You can apply for all seven products simultaneously and get approved for all seven. You just got to understand the implementation strategy. Like, right. it, if they're coming into products that are credit-driven or income-driven, then if you have the documentation, all seven spaces can be filled out simultaneously. Especially if they're playing the trust game, because they can have seven different entities doing seven different things through one fiduciary. Equipment leasing is in one trust. The commercial real estate is in another trust. Uh, merchants, merchant account services is in another trust. All these are trusts. But that's where you would what use the tools to perfect those nuances because those niches are very easy to implement. You just have to draw you out an outline. Like, that's, why I'm, that's what I'm leaning into. Like, if you want to get into specifics, then I need you to kind of give me a parameter that I can bounce different things from my AI to you where you can kind of see it from that perspective and build from there. I mean, we're really... I had some other things that I was thinking, but just with what you just said, because, you know, to be able to uh, utilize, you know, different different things that Go Capital is offering just by using uh, mm -hmm. a different set of trust right. is something that I'm interested in. Right. What I would do, just like how I created, I created a resource data set from this mortgage-backed security PDF. I would download the product list of Go Capital, create an outline, and start asking your PDF questions. Okay, and apothecation mm -hmm. covers, will cover, or can cover, right. um, all of those different um, exactly. All those different that's that's where that other that's where that private asset manual comes into play. So once you get it set, now go to now take that same data set and apply it into that private asset manual. Because it's got forms, it's got cases, it's got all the fillers that you need. You talking about the, the, the private equity book? Yeah. Oh yeah, I haven't gotten all the way. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? Yes, it's right there. You just pages. Yeah, you just you just yeah. chunk, you grab just copy and paste a chapter at a time. Mm -hmm. And you got a vehicle? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. When you it's, so that's what I'm saying. You have all of the you can sit there for a few hours with that and create your own platform. You just got to just the sky's the limit. Okay. 